Welcome to another episode of One Wingspan Above, where we discuss anything to do with ground effect. In this episode, we get into how Formula One cars suck using upside down ground effect. We find out how to order our own Econata plan, and we jump into the first flight of the quarter scale model of the Sea Glider from Regent. Plus, we find out the pains ThinkFlight goes through to test their towable skim machine. G'day, Paul Dutch here. In the previous episodes, we talked about ground effect that increases lift of a wing close to the surface. But what if the wing is flipped upside down? If a free flying wing is flipped upside down, it actually situates the low pressure side on the bottom. This means that the wing force will point down instead of up. This is noticeable in free flight, but actually increases when that wing gets close to the surface. The flow area gets more constricted and the air will then flow faster and the pressure will be lower, creating a larger suction force between the wing and the surface. Why though would you want to create a suction force that drags the wing down? Well, this is handy for when you race a car at high speeds and you need extra force to push the car onto the track to grip around these tight corners. The first race car to use ground effect was not a Formula 1 race car, but it was a Can-Am racer called a 2J in 1969. The 2J didn't do this by using an upside down wing, but by using a rubber skirt to create a seal between the bottom of the car and the ground, and using two fans powered by an extra motor to suck the air out from under the car. It worked well, but it was unreliable. The first Formula 1 car to use ground effect was the Lotus 78. The Lotus 78 didn't use fans to create low pressure under the car, rather the underside of the car was shaped in such a way that air passing under the car would accelerate far more quickly, creating an area of low pressure like an upside down wing. Now decades later it seems like Grand Effect is making a comeback in Formula 1. The current design of Formula 1 cars makes close quarter racing a lot more difficult. The wings and other aerodynamic bodywork on the modern Formula 1 cars create a lot of air turbulence for the cars following behind them. By relying more on ground effect to create downforce, it allows the cars to race more closely together. The ground effect cars won't use any fans or skirts to create ground effect. Instead, these will be creating entirely by the aerodynamic design of the car's underside. Do you think we've waited long enough? The 60s produced big beasts like the Caspian Sea Monster, and now you'd like to skim in one yourself? Now you can. Hamaker Schlemmer is an American retailer and catalog company. They sell things like electronics, home living, and holiday essentials. And since recently, also a corona plants. Well, small ones. If you can part with 190,000 US dollars, you can buy what they call the flying hovercraft. They state it glides over land and water, yet also soars in the air up to 70 miles an hour with the aid of integrated wings. For the hefty price tag, there is not too much info available, and so they ask you to contact their product specialists for more information. When you Google for similar pictures to the pictures used on the websites, you quickly realize though that this vehicle is actually none other than the universal hovercraft hoverwing. When you Google a bit further, you will also discover that the trail of the universal hovercraft ran cold about five years ago. Their website is dead and both Facebook and YouTube posted their last posts a few years ago. In a Reddit a few months back, it is noted that they filed for bankruptcy in February this year. This can be verified through the bankruptcy court page. It is sad to see them go, as it seems that their hoverings were quite popular. What is not sad though, is the fact that Regions just posted their first flight. September 21st, they posted a video of that first flight that they call the first craft to take off from a controlled hydrofoil to wing-borne flight. This is not quite accurate as, for example, the JRF-5 Goose was retrofitted with foils around 62, and more recently the Lisa is a plane with foils, but nonetheless a great milestone. I'd like to point out a few things here. Firstly, the obvious one. The quarter scale model when it pops out of water in dramatic fashion 
definitely flies more than one wingspan away from the water surface. This is, as the title of this channel gives away, outside the envelope where ground effect actually occurs. So they actually skipped ground effect and went from foil born straight to flying. I'm assuming this is done because this is only the first flight and they wanted to make sure that if anything went wrong, they wouldn't slam into the water straight away. One more thing is apparent when you cycle the footage where they actually transition from foil to flying, you see the elevator doesn't act when it pops out of the water. It seems that the foils actively push it out of the water and straight after the elevator gives a pitch down movement to keep the craft level. This cannot be done effectively by hand, this needs to be done by an automated system. And indeed, if we listen to a video fragment of the Ocean Flyer channel, the company who put down money to buy 25 of these craft for use in New Zealand, you will hear that Regent states that the vehicles fly completely fly-by-wire. In itself, not a bad thing as many modern airliners are controlled with fly-by-wire systems. But they say that the vehicle actively stabilizes itself and that it is envelope protected. They state they do this by using systems like sonar, ultrasonic uh, to check the height of the craft and check in this uh, 100 times a second. This worries me a little bit because if you look at their craft, the geometry does not seem to be stable in ground effect. For this, the elevator seems to be too small. As a side note, I am not sure what the function is for the small spoiler at the leading edge of the elevator. Comment below if you have any ideas. In general, you want, especially so close to the water, to have the geometry of your skin machine self-stabilizing aerodynamically. This would mean that um, when your control system fails, your machine is still able to be flown manually. If your machine is reliant on computer systems to keep it stable, this will almost definitely mean that you will lose control when you have to take it over from the computer. Region CEO and co-founder Billy Thalhammer, in communication with us, confirmed that the geometry of the craft decreases its stability. In his communication, he referred to the X-29 forward swept wing fighter and multi-rotors and eVTOL craft to say that we have had control of unstable craft since the 80s. This is in essence correct, but I do want to mention that people have highlighted military craft and multicopters as reasons to forge ahead with computer stabilized ground effects before, and it is a bit frightening because military craft do not value human payload as much as it is valued in civil transport. And multicopters, Evitol and the like, are a technology in its infancy that I foresee having to go through a few teething problems, one particular case being safety, as soon as one comes down in an urban area. For those reasons, I believe that any ground effect dependent technology should make sure that in case of failure of the control system, the geometry should be at least be controllable by a human. The X-29, the EVTOLs are not. Big airliners like an Airbus or Boeing are at least overridable and controllable by humans if the control system fails as long as there is power. I do not see this the case with a Viceroy as it will destabilize so quickly it will crash before the pilot or the captain will have time to interject. Anyway, that is just my professional opinion from what I have learned over the years. I do hope that Regent will prove me completely wrong and that the Viceroy will be the first vehicle of fleets of skim machines roaming our seas and oceans. Another first flight is the flight of the Toad Flare Boat from YouTuber to Think Flight. A little less high-tech than region, but nonetheless a major milestone. And since we've been talking about control issues around the region sea gliders, well, Think Flight just demonstrated what could happen if indeed you'd lose control of a ground effect craft. The safety person towing the Think Flight Flare Boat seems to release the towing cable too late and it looks like the craft careers a solid 10 meters or so into the air before the pilot bailed out and made a painful landing on the water. We're glad to see he got to walk away from this one and with just a nasty looking impact rash. Be safe Think Flight and perhaps this could be a warning to Regent? For now, thank you for watching. 
Keep in the loop by hitting that subscribe button and we'll see you here for the next episode of One Wingspan Above.